episode is all about Michael Smith. Uh, we spoke about becoming your authentic you. Uh, he um, explained a bit about his journey and uh, his message to our youth and much more. I will read his bio aloud. So for over two decades, um, Dr. Michael R. Smith has worked to help empaths and highly sensitive people recognize and embrace their gifts. As a doctoral trained counselor and energy healing practitioner, millions of people worldwide have been guided by his work through empath connection. And he has personally helped thousands of sensitive people make stronger connections between mind, body and spirit. Michael has spent the last 18 years working with indigenous healers around the world to more deeply explore and promote human potential. And since 2010, he has been facilitating the online Empath Academy course that helps empaths and sensitive people overcome their challenges and embrace their gifts. Here is Michael. Enjoy. Look at this. Yeah, that's yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. When I received a, a photo, it really is, is somehow, it, how do you say that? It struck me or it, it really affected me in a positive way. It's really uh -huh. intriguing. Really? Yeah. How old what were did, you here? How did it intrigue you? What did you see or what did you experience? Yeah, the, um, the look in your eyes so deep mm. and uh, the structure of your eyebrow and the way the strength it's so powerful ah wow well that is my favorite photo of me from, uh, as a child because i see i see a lot of the same things that you do there so uh, i appreciate that yeah the echo. <laughs> yeah. So, um, how old were you here? Seven. Seven. Okay. Yeah. I was in second grade, so I might have been. I might have. Might have been seven and a half, maybe eight tops. <laughs> yeah. What were your interests at the time? Oh, uh, my interests. Oh gosh. Uh, I liked watching, uh, sh I, I was very theatrical. I thought I was gonna be a TV weatherman <laughs> at the time. I thought, I knew that I would have some public role and having something to do with performance, whether that was politics. I was interested in politics, even as a seven-year-old. I was a, I thought I would be a, po a politician, a TV weatherman, or a, a writer. And, um, one of those things came to be true. I was a writer. So I was interested in, I read the newspaper every day at seven years old and I was very intellectual even then. What advice would your seven year old um, Michael provide to you now? Mm, what would, what advice would, would my seven year old Michael provide to me now? That is a fascinating question. Um, well, he would say, uh, just be true to yourself. Don't worry about trying to fit in. Uh, be who you are, which is curious and creative and fascinated with the world. Um, those are all really wonderful things. Uh, when I was in my 20s, of my late teens and 20s, I had sort of moved away from embracing all of the beautiful traits when I was seven that I that I carried and sort of suppressed them because as a man in, in Western culture, those particular traits, sensitive, emotional, very emotional, uh, easily cry, um, inquisitive, creative, feminine, even you might say, uh, those traits are not, weren't necessarily valued. And I learned as a teenager from being sort of picked on uh, when I was 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, especially starting around 12, 13, 14, 15, I learned to sort of suppress those traits in, in me, like who I really am. And so one of the lessons that I've learned from my seven-year-old Michael over the years <clears throat> is to just be who I am and not care uh, what anyone, how anyone might react to me, uh, who I am, uh, so on and so forth. So yeah, just accept who you are and love who you are. And, and I, that's what I do now. Uh, it took a while to get to that place though. <laughs> Yeah. And in what way were you picked on? Uh, uh just, uh, you know, um, I think, I think honestly that because uh, sensitive people have an ability to, to sort of perceive very accurately who another person is, a lot of people are threatened by that and, and men in particular boys in particular, at least when I was a, a young child, I had an ability to, to see right through someone. I could see whether, you know, if they're struggling, uh, even at that young of an age, we know, sensitive people know, empaths know what's going on with another person. And I was no different than every other empath who has that gift and ability. And so I think that because other people on a subconscious level, on other boys in particular, in my case, uh knew that i <laughs> could see the real deal who they really are that's very threatening to a lot of people in particular men it, it can be very threatening and uh and so that i think that is honestly that leads to a dynamic of of being picked on or bullied in some cases um because people are reacting against their own suppressed selves that they don't want to be seen for who they really are, warts and all. Yeah. And in what way did you suppress that? Oh, I suppressed it by, um, I'm, I'm very, I'm fairly extroverted uh, in most situations. I love talking to people. I love people in general, um, which is not always the case for a lot of sensitive people. I would say the majority, I mean, at least the data shows that the majority of sensitive people, if you're going to use a very general statistic here, it's around 60 to 70% of us are more introverted, right? What I have found over the years is that isn't totally accurate. It depends on who we are around. If we are around people that make us feel safe and warm and invited like friends or family, then we are we are pretty balanced in terms of our extroversion, introversion. Um, so for me, I have always loved people regardless of whoever, whoever I'm interacting with, whoever I'm with, just as a, just who I am and the default seven year old, right. Uh, and 49 year old now, um, <laughs> uh, I love people. I love talking to people. I love interacting with them. I enjoy it. I love learning about people, but over the years I suppressed it by just being shy. I, suppressed it by not in, in my teens as a teenager in particular being very quiet painfully quiet which is not who i really am i enjoy learning about people now granted i don't like particularly being overstimulated at a party <laughs> where there's 30 people uh that can sometimes be a little overwhelming as it is for most empaths and insensitive people uh that's not always the greatest forum to be who you really are, large gatherings, malls, bars, that <laughs> type of a thing. Uh, so yeah, I, I kind of closed up and I shut down and, and uh, uh, in my teens and uh, early 20s. And then once I got out of college and I got into my master's program, then I felt much more free to be who I really was uh, or who I really am. And over the years, learned to accept myself for who I am Warts and all, as I like to say. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Food, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's nice that you say um, um, that you say something about shyness because um, many people uh, expect that um, highly sensitive people and empaths are shy just by nature, but it's a, a learned behavior. So it's really yeah. nice that you uh, express that. Yes. 
Yes, it's not, um, it is a learned behavior. And, and so, yes, we, the introversion in most of the cases is, is learned. Uh, there is some part of it. Some, some of us obviously are more extroverted than others. But I think in the large majority of, of empaths and sensitive, that's learned. We learn to, to, to shut ourselves down. We worry how we're going to be perceived. Um, how, what are people going to think about us? Because of the energy of judgment, this is the one energy that is, I would say, it's, it's the, the deepest wound for most empaths and sensitive people. And in particular, really every human on the planet, but in particular for empaths and sensitive, because we've been judged for being different. We've been, we are different than the average person. We are more deep. We are more inquisitive. We are more reflective. We're more creative. We are here to break the norms. We are here to be different. Uh, we're made that way by the divine. We're made that way by source, great mystery, whatever you want to call that. We are different. And, and that doesn't mean we are better or worse. We're not. We are just unique. We are uniquely who we are. And so the work that I've been doing with Empaths and Sensitive, and which I enjoy, it's my passion, is to help bring out the cuckoo. <laughs> that's that's yeah. my word for my inner comedian, my inner crazy, my mm -hmm. inner weirdo, uh, who is different. He likes doing things in a different way way than the average person and that's a great uh energy to be instilled with and gifted by the divine with and so that's what we do in in my classes um uh, in particular the empath academy work is just to just have fun with who we really are and explore who we really are and help all of us get into our authenticity and our truth yeah. of us <laughs> for far too long it's been about focusing on the external and and others and that that day has passed that day is done it's time to focus on us now and our uniqueness and and the value that we bring the benefit that we bring to the world yeah 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 i, I remember that when people um used to say to me um uh, uh oh but but was she shy and it's all, oh, phew, no, I don't have to perform. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, I don't have to do anything. So that no. was, uh, it was a kind of a, a happy excuse <laughs> that other people <laughs> um, determined for me, um, mm. but it, it helped at times. So, but it's, it's definitely uh, a challenge to, um, uh, to, to leave the things that other people think they perceive about you, to put them aside and then go your own path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm really curious, what do you, you say um, uh, to find your truth? And I know exactly what you mean. And I also know it's a, it's a huge journey. Yeah. Um, so how do you know that you found your truth? How does it look like? How does it feel? Mm. it feels a feeling of there's no resistance when you're in your when you are expressing yourself in in your authentic truth there is no anxiety anxiety is it takes many forms as we all know it can be physical it can be mental it can be emotional the one commonality among all the forms of anxiety is that it often is a form of resistance resistance to some emotion resistance that is created or friction friction to a thought uh, that rubs us the wrong way or rubs us rubs us the wrong way so it's like a friction or a resistance when you are in your true authentic self which is accepting yourself for who you are without judgment no judgment there is no resistance therefore there is no anxiety there's only peace and there's space. There's space in between our thoughts. There's space in our energy field for, for light, not shadow and density. We yeah. accept the shadow when it comes, but 
when we're in our true authentic selves, we accept ourselves exactly as we are, exactly as we are. And then there's just no, uh, or a lot less, dramatically less anxiety. Yeah. Can you explain to the younger audience, what, what is your shadow self? Shadow self would be, um, you know, if you've ever, for, for the kids or the children or the young adults that are listening, you know, just fighting with your siblings or fighting with one of your friends uh, because you didn't get a piece of candy and, uh, you know, or, or they got a, a bigger bag of Halloween candy, for instance, something like that, you know, where you get a little irritated at one of your friends or your loved ones or your mom or your dad, because they maybe your mom or dad said, oh, no, uh, you have to go to bed at, at uh, seven o'clock tonight or eight o'clock tonight. And, and maybe you wanted to stay up till nine or 10. And then you get, no, I don't like that. <laughs> That's your shadow self. <laughs> The shadow self gets irritated, frustrated, angry sometimes. And uh, we all have that part of us and it's okay. We don't uh, judge ourselves for having a shadow self. It's a great question. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I, I absolutely get what you're saying. And I also understand that there will be people who are watching and might uh, not be in the same uh, place as you are in your life right now, um, where uh, you can speak about light and all those uh, beautiful things and knowing your truth and um, who might be um, feeling a bit anxious in this point of their life mm -hmm. and, and not knowing what, what is um, maybe finding out or acknowledging or realizing that they also have their own path in life yes. um, and, and don't see the future that all rainbow and unicorns. Yes. If you don't see rainbow and unicorns and if you're feeling a lot of anxiety, which a lot of empaths and sensitives are right now, we're feeling a lot of anxiety because uh, on some degree, you're making the world's problem your own. And so what I found is over the years is that one of the ways that I've dramatically lessened my own anxiety is I've stopped with the belief that I have to fix, rescue, save, heal anyone else, including the world. So I sent out a survey to my list uh, about two weeks ago, and that was the number one issue. I, I said, I asked my, my email list, I sent out a Monday message to all of my uh, followers and I asked, I wanted to know, you know, what's, what's going through your mind. So I asked, what is the one question that you would like the universe to shed light on for you? And I started to notice a theme as I was reviewing the hundreds of submissions that almost, you know, 50% of the, of the responses were asking some form of question. How do I, how do I not let the craziness of the world right now affect me? And because there's so much chaos in the world right now, we, we don't like violence. We see a lot of the violence between the back and forth between people right now in the world and sensitive people and empaths. We don't understand that. We're not violent people. So we don't, we don't understand that. We don't get that. However, you know, if you're, if you're feeling affected by the world, it's because on some level you're allowing it to. And um, that means you're, there's a subconscious belief with a lot of us that we have to use our gifts to help heal, rescue, fix. And, and some of us have had trauma in our childhoods where that was expected, that we, that we step in, that we overgive, we, we must rescue, we must heal, we must save somebody else. And that's part of our journey. So if that's you right now, accept that that is a part of your journey that has been a part of your journey and that is in the past and you are now moving out of that paradigm as i am and many of the people that i work with when you become empowered as a sensitive person or as an empath they're very similar you can use the same terms interchangeably many of the people that i work with do and and, and i do myself um, your goal as an empowered sensitive or as empowered empath is to realize that you have the power to not, you really do have the power to not let the world or someone else's energy affect you. And so if you're feeling anxiety because you're looking at the social media, well then look, ask yourself, maybe uh, am I willing to reduce my use of social media so that doesn't affect me so much? 
because social media is very dense. You may follow the what you think are the highest vibrational people on the on Facebook or Instagram. You're still going to subconsciously pull that energy into you because that's what we're designed to do. We're designed to perceive more, feel more, know more. And we, we literally have energy fields that pull in more energy information from the external world. So for you, if you're feeling anxiety, if you're feeling that, don't judge it, first of all, and then assess, how can I disconnect a little bit of my energy from the chaos of the world? For most of us, that's going to mean limiting social media, limiting news, limiting TV, limiting garbage, eating better foods to raise our, our vibrations and keep our body physically healthy. Because when we're physically healthy, we're more emotionally and mentally healthy. A lot of my clients use substances, alcohol, uh, cannabis, food in particular, sugar being a huge one, use addictions to cope and self-soothe. This is making everything worse. So think about it. If you are someone who does that, who uses uh, shopping as an addiction or uh, sex or, or food or alcohol or you know wine is a big one for a lot of empaths, that's lowering your vibration. And when you lower your vibration, you're gonna, the universe is gonna send you more junk and that you're gonna then have to process out of your system through anxiety. <laughs> so in this day and age, you're being asked to really take a good self-assessment of where the behaviors that you are doing uh, that are creating your own anxiety. It's not as simplistic. We are affected by the world. We will always feel other people. We will feel the world. I'm not trying to be Pollyanna or unicorns and rainbows. I'm <laughs> simply trying to uh, instill in you the message that you have a large, you have more power than you think maybe that you know. And a simple change here, a simple change there, committing, committing to yourself to change the behaviors that are contributing to your anxiety will go a long way towards empowering you and helping you find the peace that uh, comes when you are empowered. And meditation is another one, passive meditation, silencing your mind, going like, how long can you go for without a thought? For those of you that are listening right now, just quiet your mind, become aware of what you hear and how long can you go without a thought? Try it. It's a form of meditation right there. Meditation doesn't have to be a 30 minute session where you're sitting there oming. Yeah. Meditation is woven out throughout your entire day where it's little moments like that, where you become aware and present like, oh yeah, I'm looking at a wall or I'm hearing the sound of birds. That's meditation. And that brings in more space that helps you uh, have less resistance and anxiety. Yeah. That was a long answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <But> beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, exactly. That's a great message uh, to our youth. And uh, I'm really curious about when, um, what would you like to say to women um, about how to support highly sensitive men? What is your message? Mm. The degree to which you accept your own self as a person is the degree to which your children are going to accept themselves. That's what comes. I've never been really asked that question before in that way. And so when I got quiet, which is a learned skill, you get in touch with your divine self and the divine self will give you the words. Those are the words that came through. When you accept yourself as you are, without judgment for you, your children will accept themselves. Or, or, for who they are. Yeah. It all starts with you as a parent, how you feel about you. And your children are gonna be a direct reflection of how you feel about you. So do the work if, if you need to do work, if you haven't done it on embracing who you are as a sensitive person, as, as how, how God and the divine source has made you. And then it'll just be really in the long run, It'll be smooth sailing in the long run. Maybe in the short run, it might not be such so smooth sailing as you're going through the terrible twos or <laughs> that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, yeah, good question. 
So never going back to the storms that we were talking about, uh, the terrible twos. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so um, how can people contact you? Uh, I can be contacted at empathconnection.com. You can take a look at uh, the classes that I offer. The most popular class that I offer is the Empath Academy. It's a live group class. Uh, it runs for five weeks. I've been doing it for 10 years. It sells out every cycle for a reason. It's We just bring a lot of goodness. You're going to meet a lot of your uh, people that are just like you, that vibe on your same frequency, so to speak. It's really fun. I really enjoy doing it. And a lot of the classes, just having fun together and just uh, embracing our inner weirdos and our inner crazy and our inner uh, you know, Buddha, our inner Christ or whatever, you know, those types of archetypes. Uh, that we all carry to amp up our connection to our true authentic self, which is the divine self. And by divine, I just mean uh, authentic, the true self uh, connected to source. Yeah. And that's what we do. So, uh, and, and feel free to, if you have any questions about that, go to my website, fill out the form, send me an email. I review all my own emails and um, be happy to address any questions you have about any of my work personally. And then I have a quiz on my website too, which is kind of a small little fun 10 question quiz. It's not designed to be scientific or anything, but um, when, you, when you take the quiz, I'll send you my Monday messages, uh, which I like to do every Monday. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you for your support for a highly sensitive man. Absolutely, it's, it's such a joy to be um, with you and, and with all of you who are are listening and watching um thank you for stepping up your commitment to accepting who you are whether you're male or female yeah thank you so much thank you suzanne i'm michael and i am a highly sensitive man <laughs>